What? We're live? No, we're not. That's just the name of the show. I'm your host, Drew Geraci, and today we're talking about the new Dell Precision 5750. Let's take a look. All right, here we go. This is the brand new Dell Precision 5750. And this laptop right here is really meant for high-end editing for both photo and video as well as animation and AR. Um, and I have to say it's probably one of the sleekest packages I've seen for a computer in a long time. Um, I've used a lot of MacBook Pros in the past as well as MSI's fully um, full-size hardware laptops as well as um, Dell's XPS line. And this is the first Precision line um, that I'm actually super impressed with. Um, just because of the size, the weight, um, and also the robust tools that come with it. Um, let's just dive into the specs on this one in particular. Um, this has the 8-core Xeon processor. It tops out at 5.3 gigahertz. Um, this one has 64 gigs of RAM in it. It also has the RTX Quattro 3000, and then it also comes with uh, 3 terabytes of NVMe SSD. Now, one thing that blew me away when I first saw this laptop was the screen. It is just absolutely gorgeous. It's top to bottom, full frame, almost edge to edge, pure bliss. I think Dell did a great job utilizing, um, you know, the full 4K um, screen on this uh, laptop. And being that it's also touch enabled, it's nice being able to use it as a touch screen, almost like tablet per se. But it's just really beautiful overall. One thing that I think really makes this unique, and I think they're taking the, um, I'll, I'll say this, the, the design from Apple, is that it doesn't have any USB-A ports on it. It's all USB-C, Thunderbolt 3, but this one actually also comes with a full SD card reader, which I think is amazing, and also a headphone jack, because, you know, you want to listen to headphones when you're out on set or uh, on a shoot, and I think that's fantastic to have. It also boasts a pretty long battery life. I've been testing it out for the past uh, two weeks and I've found with just moderate editing, it lasts for about four to five hours um, without power. And that's utilizing heavy CPU use as well as GPU use. It has a new express charge, which means in about an hour, you can get 80% of your battery back and then a full charge um, with just a little bit over an hour's worth of charge. That being said, I always recommend um, that you have your laptop plugged in um, to a power source so you get the full power of the processor and the GPU. Now, this laptop is made and designed for photographers, editors, um, and anyone that's working with animation or VR. And it's really a breath of fresh air. Um, personally, I've been using a lot of different laptops over the last uh, five or six years, and I think Dell's really risen to the top. Some of the features that I didn't even think about when I got this laptop was that it has a new fingerprint scanner, and realistically, I was like, eh, who cares, it's a fingerprint scanner. But I find I use it every day, and it makes logging into the system so much easier. Um, I don't have to worry about passwords, I don't have to worry about putting in my PIN or anything like that. It's literally just one touch and you're logged in to your, uh, to your account. And I think that's pretty impressive. The laptop weighs only 4.7 pounds with its base configuration, which is pretty light. And if you compare it to the old XPS 15s, it's pretty much on par with those. And the 17 inch version actually fits uh, very nicely into a 15 inch laptop sleeve which uh, is great, especially if you're on the run. Um, I know that when I'm on set or I'm out on a shoot, I wanna be able to have a really nice mobile laptop that's powerful. And being able to use the Dell Precision 5750 has enabled me to pretty much go anywhere with this um, and have almost the full power of a desktop system uh, right at my fingertips. And when we're talking about fingertips, the new trackpad on the laptop is pretty badass as well. I was kind of apprehensive about how large it was at first, but after I've been using it for a little bit, it's very smooth, tactile. Um, the pressure when you like want to double click or just move the mouse around, it's very responsive. And uh, overall, really impressed with that. Uh, the keyboard is also backlit, so if you're in a situation where you're in the dark, and I know sometimes when you're on set or just in a dark location, you want to be able to see what you're typing out, and you can actually um, see here that the, the backlit keyboard really um, shines brightly, um, even in a very dark, dim situation. So that's a big plus. Uh, Dell's also moved the webcam from the bottom of the, uh, the screen, which I never understood why they did that in the first place, but it's back up to the top. So if you're doing any kind of Zoom meetings or uh, any kind of web uh, webinars, you'll be able to use the, the top-facing camera. And um, it produces pretty good quality um, video as well. Now let's talk about benchmarks. I went inside of Geekbench and uh, ran the score, and the Dell Precision 5750 scored a 1276 single core score as well as a 8,111 multi-core score, which is pretty high. Comparatively, if you look at the fastest MacBook Pro that's on here, this is the 15-inch mid-2019 with a core processor as well. 
It only scored a 1,118 score for the single core and a 67-64 multi-core score. So it's, uh, it's about 20% slower than the new Dell Precision 5750, which is pretty impressive. So benchmark scores aside, let's actually see how this works in the real world. I've got an 8K red helium clip here. I'm going to drag and drop in the timeline. We are on a 4K timeline. I'll open this up so you guys can see. So the timeline resolution is a 4K timeline. I'm not doing an 8K timeline right now because there's really no reason to do that. The monitor is only 4K, so we're only going to be viewing it back at 4K at the maximum uh, bit depth. Now, if I just do the initial play on this, you can see right up in the top right hand corner, we are getting a consistent 24 frames per second. We can see that the flag here is moving um, very fluidly in the space that it's in. And, uh, and yeah, it looks beautiful. Uh, I think being able to play back 8K footage like this raw um, is, is pivotal for anyone that's in our industry, whether you're a professional or even just a, a hobbyist. Um, you want to be able to see the content that you're creating um, in real time as it's being played back. Now let's go into the color section here so we can bring out some more information. Or I'm in the raw tab right now. So we'll go in here and we'll adjust a little bit of the, uh, the information in here. I'm going to bring the ISO up a little bit so we can see it. Change that exposure. Shadows come down a little bit. I'll do a few curve adjustments. You can see that it's happening in real time. We'll even change the white balance a little bit. Maybe make it a little more golden-y. There we go. Uh, we'll play this back. And again, you can see the flag is moving very fluidly in the bottom left-hand corner, and we're getting a consistent 24 frames per second. And then down here, you can see that we are at a full 8K resolution, 16-bit um, red codec. Now I'm going to zoom in a little bit so we can see a little bit more of that detail. So this is 100% of the 8K image. And I'm going to go ahead and hit play from this. And you can see we are getting 24 frames per second at the 8K full resolution. You can see our flag is waving very fluidly in the, uh, the breeze, and we can see all the cars and all the other information that's in the scene uh, being displayed at real time in the background. Now let's hop over to the Sony Venice footage. I've always had an issue playing this in pretty much any editing system I've had, uh, but as of recently, uh, Resolve has really kicked it up a notch, and it just plays it back so fluidly and smoothly. So I'm going to go back into our color settings here. We'll adjust some settings in here. I'm going to increase the exposure a little bit so we can see the scene. Going to reduce this back down to fit. I'll play with our curves a little bit and give it a play. And as you can see, we're getting very smooth, consistent 24 frames per second. We can see that this is a 6K, 16-bit Sony RAW file over here. And it's just playing back beautifully. No skipping, no stuttering, no hesitation. It just plays back like butter. And I think that's exactly what any editor or any cinematographer wants when they're showcasing their work. They want to be able to show everything that's happening in real time, not having to wait for any kind of renders or proxies. And this is just the best way to do it. And I haven't found a laptop yet that can play it as well as this laptop can. For the most part, this is the best when it comes to uh, mobility as well as power um, and as well as full 8K playback. So this is pretty much like the Goldilocks of laptops. Um, and if you're in a market or an industry where you need to have power and uh, performance on the go, this would be my go-to choice, um, without a doubt. One thing about the laptop that I'm not really a big fan of, and I think anyone who's used a new MacBook Pro would probably say the same thing, is that there are no USB-A ports on it. It's all USB-C uh, Thunderbolt 3 ports. And you have to use one of those ports for the power, which then limits you to three ports. Um, so it can be kind of difficult to use when you want to have you know, a mouse and then external hard drives connected together. So you kind of have to be judicial in what you actually plug into the laptop. Uh, that being said, they do supply you with a USB-C to USB-A and HDMI port, which is nice. Uh, but I really don't like having to bring dongles on the set. Uh, so if you have any kind of um, external device, you have to make sure that it's USB-C only. Um, otherwise, you're going to have to bring a dongle. And that's not to say it's bad, and I think that that's where the future is going. We are obviously getting away from USB-A um, type ports, but at the same time, it would be nice to have at least one USB-A port on here. Uh, that way we can actually um, utilize extra uh, peripherals that we have um, if we don't have a dongle with us. That being said, not a deal breaker. Um, I'm happy to bring a small dongle. They also sell these like small 
uh, little USB-C to USB-A dongles um, for a couple bucks, and it works pretty well. But overall, really no problems with this laptop. Um, the performance is amazing, and I really enjoy using it. Um, it's really nice to see the screen go from top to bottom, as also just how thin it is, and being able to take this anywhere on set, uh, it's pretty mind-blowing. So overall, I think Dell did a wonderful job of putting this laptop together. There's a lot of thought, a lot of care that went into it, and um, it's, it's reflected in the quality of the, the laptop itself. Well, that'll do it for today. I want to give a big thanks to Dell and NVIDIA for sending me the unit. I'm going to be using it on future productions, so I'll share my experiences along the way. If you have any questions, feel free to put them down below in the comment section. Um, and if you like what you saw, please like and subscribe. And as always, happy shooting. Cheers, guys.